Welcome to the Creative Cows DSLR podcast. I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Rich Harrington. Rich, so after you've exhausted the possibilities of recording you know, audio on your built-in microphone on your camera, maybe using an attached microphone or a mic preamp, what's the next step? Well, let's really go into a sync sound workflow where you're using a dedicated recorder to record the audio. And this could be a single audio recorder used for multiple cameras, like mm -hmm. maybe you're filming a concert or a wedding and you've got a centralized place. And so in cases like that, it's very easy to just take a recorder like this guy here and mm -hmm. drop it by the soundboard and patch in. Yep. Or even when you're doing an interview, you know, one camera, two camera interview, the ability to plug in real XLR audio and use professional quality microphones is great. Plus, you know, these have great advantage. They can provide phantom power. If yep. your mics need power, you see real VU meters with the ability to adjust the can recording record in a variety of sample, sample sizes and, and, uh, and frequencies, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do like MP3 quality audio. You could do full, uncompressed, 96 kilohertz, big broadcast wave files, really good stuff. Absolutely. Now, when we talk about dual system sound, in some ways, we're regressing a little bit, right, from the video camera revolution, if you will, you know, 20, 25 years ago, because, you know, most video cameras that are out there, people have gotten very used to, well, I shoot my video and I record my audio all to the same device, but going to the world of film, this is a pretty common practice. Yeah, this is not an unheard of workflow. It's very traditional, I guess you could say. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we know it's traditional because, you know, for example, something like a slate, which everybody recognizes from the industry, well, I encounter people in the video industry who don't really understand that the slate is actually more than just holding up a sign to say what take you're on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the idea here is that the camera would see the slate closing and you would get that spike in the audio track. So what we're doing is we're shooting video with our camera, we're recording with a digital audio recorder like this little guy from uh, this Zoom H4n or there's others out there. And what we're doing is we're pointing our camera at the slate, audio recorder is recording, and then what we do is use a slate, um, a clap of the hands, or some other sound that we have as a reference point for later on in post-production that we can sync up the video that's shot with this and the audio that's recorded with the digital audio recorder. Yeah, and the nice thing is if you wait to roll until you're actually framed up on the slate, you can load up all sorts of information. This is a traditional, you know, wooden slate. An analog slate. An analog will. slate. And there's even slate applications, like this particular one here is for the iPad. Yep. And I could load up all sorts of information about it, and then I just say, oh, okay, well that's loaded. Go ahead and open the slate. And when I'm ready to go, you know, it's loaded there. Let's just turn the volume up so you can hear it. And you know, it's got everything in there, and then we just say, okay, when we call marker, it's actually giving it time of day time codes as right, reference. Right, because these cameras, as of yet, don't support other time codes uh, syncing or jamming. They're using time of day. And when we press that, it'll flash through all the information and give that high pitched that, beep. That little two pop, yeah. That clearly lets you something to sync to when you go to edit. So when we get into post-production, even though it sounds daunting, all we're really doing is lining up that sync point from our video and our audio, lining them up together, they're in sync, we can make a clip out of them, and then from there on out, we're working with synced audio and uh, you know, from our digital audio recorder. Yeah, and what's important here is that you see that slate information on the video clip, but on the audio track, you actually read out enough information right, like, this is scene two, take three, marker and you know so you actually have the two pieces to match up so i'm out there in the field i'm using my digital audio recorder should i just abandon the idea of recording directly to the camera no you still need reference audio so that you have you know some backup plus we have things you know we've seen things fail so bad audio is still better than no audio yep. but you know there's nothing wrong with having two levels of recording and you know once you get that you know using an external mic like this that's going to get you better quality audio to mm -hmm. the mic maybe that'll give you some room tone or some presence or background audio to layer in for some texture and feel yep. while you know like a lav mic that you're wearing there is much better for an interview so these all come together and it's really a pretty simplified post workflow you could do it by hand you could do it with markers or there's even a great tool called pluralize which works with vegas premiere pro they, Final also, Cut. they also have dual eyes now too which is, is specifically for the the dslr market yeah and that just lets you put everything into a folder and sync it up ahead yep. of time. Yep. Yeah, so this is really, really useful. So if you're doing multi-camera productions, even if it's just two camera productions, or you want that higher quality audio, especially for interviews, this sync sound workflow just takes a little bit of practice, yep. but it's not that hard. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, you record reference audio here, you got your high quality audio here. 
you bring them into the computer, sync them up, and you're good to go. Now, the digital audio recorders, I mean, we should say there's a lot of variation on features and inputs and all that kind of stuff. A couple hundred dollars. Now. Yeah, I mean, you can go from a couple hundred dollars, or if you know, you're doing your next feature and you have a huge budget, there's some really high-end uh, digital audio recorders out there. But I found so far that, you know, this guy, this, this Zoom H4n, it's a, you know, a pretty good choice for, you know, uh, a shooter who is out there and needs to get good audio, uh, good audio and you know on a budget. Yeah, and I've seen people take this and mount it right to the bracket on the camera. You can get an L bracket and attach it so the two are right there. It's not that hard. The thing here is just to remember that good pictures without good sound is not good video. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. My name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And you can head on over to creativecow.net and check out their DSLR form where you can post your questions and search for new answers. Thanks again. Thank you.